podcast at kcaaradio.com. Hello and welcome to Building Solid Foundations Radio. I'm your host, Steve Matley. We are on KCAA Radio, 1050 AM, 102.3 FM, and 106.5 FM, or catches on your favorite podcast platform, including Spotify, iHeart, Apple, Spreaker, and others. Or you can catch us on the Building Solid Foundations TV channel on Roku, or on the Building Solid Foundations channel on YouTube. Today, I have a special guest in the studio, CJ Gilbert. He is a website pro, a speaker, an author, and a coach. And I'm going to give a short little bio for him before I bring him on. Um, He is, CJ is a website developer for over 25 years. And of course, I don't know if the internet's a whole lot older than that. So he's been around for a long time and he's a speaker and author teaching business owners how to use their websites as their number one business tool so they can make more money and serve clients better, faster, and easier. CJ empowers entrepreneurs, speakers, coaches, and authors to spread their unique message and gifts and therefore collectively help millions. Welcome to Building Solid Foundation, CJ. It's great to have you. Thank you so much. A pleasure to be on your show, Steve. Thank you. And and you mentioned you have five keys to unlock the profit hidden in your website. Yes. That sounds like a great promise. So I'm <laughs> we'll, looking we'll, forward to that. We'll chat our way through those, I'm sure. Now, a, a quick little uh, disclaimer up front. I am completely tech unsavvy. I am a techno moron. I, I have no problem with that. Uh, I am the kind of person that is very patient with people and pretty easygoing, but I do cuss and swear a lot at my computer because <laughs> it doesn't do what I ask it to do. Yeah. And and the window comes up and says, can't help you. That's an error. You did this wrong or it loops you around into endless circles. Yeah. And this is why I have no hair is because of technology. I, I pulled it all out by now. <laughs> well, good news for you then. We're not going to talk about anything that's really technical today. Good, good. Okay. Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, bites are what you enjoy at dinner. Exactly. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll start off with what is your number one tip, especially for people like me that don't know nothing about nothing when it comes to websites? Absolutely. Great question. And right off the bat, uh, I'll let you know that, of course, I'm a website developer, so I'm teaching people how to use their website. I want business owners and entrepreneurs to understand that their website is their number one tool to grow and support their business. And if they think of it that way as a tool that they can use intentionally for their business, they'll use it to attract more customers, make more sales, and improve their customer service. Yeah, and that's one of the few things I did learn about websites. I do have websites for my businesses. Mm -hmm. And one reason I do is multiple books and speakers and professionals and experts said, Everything you do needs to point people to the website. Exactly. Everything you have is to drive people to the website. The problem for me is figuring out, okay, I understand that academically. Mm-hmm. It's making it happen. And then once they get to the website, so what? What are they doing now? Um, so where, where do I start? What, what, what do I go to? Absolutely. You know, the, the thing that I really want to emphasize, emphasize, if you hear nothing else that I say for the rest of our program, really pay attention to this one thing. Your website is the only thing you can fully own and control on the internet. And isn't it true that every other platform out there is telling you to come to their platform and invest your time in their website and building up the authority of their website? And there's value there because if you have customers there, if you have potential clients there, you could spend time there. You could attract people from those platforms. And and so we're all providing their content. That's what we're doing. All they do is create a shell and said, Come in and populate our platform with your content and we'll make money on it. That's right. And by the way, we will curate the audience that Mm -hmm. then we can share with you. Absolutely. So there's huge value in being on those platforms and attracting people from those platforms. But I want you to always remember it's your own website. That's the only thing you can fully own and control online. Now, my website's a little bit different because I get I get the um, emails three times a week and the spam filter that say we can help you with your SEO or yeah. you have a great website, but here's what I think we need to fix, right? We get those, yeah, right? Yeah, you'll always get those. Always get those. <laughs> but our website was never designed for that. Mm. So I have, I have a weird company. My mm-hmm. company, my website exists specifically for potential investors to vet us. Mm-hmm. It's a place for them to start their cyber stalking is what it is. Exactly. 
Exactly. And isn't that such a cool concept? You know, I, I, I talk a lot in my, um, in my business world about the internet being a jungle. That's, that's, right. that's kind of my theme. That's the right. internet's a jungle. And often I'll wear my safari hat and I'll talk about the safari animals that we're seeing. But I truly believe that, that mankind, humans, are the strangest animal. And isn't it true that when someone wants to do some research on you, they feel this need to do research and to, to find out what they can about you, but also humans are really lazy. So isn't it amazing that we can create a website, we can essentially put on a silver platter the stuff that we want them to come and find, and then in, their, in that moment when they're ready to do their research and they're ready to figure out what they're gonna do next to make their good decisions, they come to the website and they get to read what we've just set right out there for them. And well, the other, the other aspect of humans, in addition to that that I find is we're voyeuristic. Mm. We like to peek through the windows. Mm -hmm. We wanna see what you're doing and what you're about without you noticing us being there. Yes. Yes. yes, and that's fascinating when it comes to the whole idea of the sales process. When you sit down with someone one-on-one -on -one and you, you know that if you're in that situation where they're going to try to sell you their thing, don't you typically put up a, a wall of resistance? You want to protect yourself from you know that salesperson that's well, going to sell you that thing. It's, it's why we get a knot in our stomach before we head to the car lot. Sure, exactly Because we right. know as soon as somebody approaches us, we're, we're in for it. So we put our defenses up immediately, yeah. a big concrete wall that says, back off, stop trying to sell me something. Right, right, exactly. Now think about that psychology when that person is in their own home office, they're in their own comfortable environment, they don't feel you you know, right in their face trying to sell something. So the psychology is that wall is down. They're not in a, I'm gonna be sell, sold to right now mentality. They're in a, I'm doing research and I'm learning mentality. So that's the mindset they have when they come to your website. They're very open, they're very receptive when they're in that research phase. So a website is phenomenal for this no pressure, n no sales pressure environment, but it's still a sales opportunity. And, and I've actually, I've been to some websites where I believe the biggest mistake they made is when they get in the website, it looks like a sales pitch. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm getting the high pressure from them. Mm. It's, right? It's big fonts and flashing things and videos that <laughs> pop up and you know, um, you know, countdown clocks. Right? You know, right. opportunity disappears in 35 seconds. Sure. Right? And 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 those are just a turnoff to me because mm. I feel like I'm in a high pressure sales environment. Even though, even though they're not holding me there, I can click out of it. But I'm thinking, what an offensive website this right. thing is. Right. We never want to do something that would drive people away from the website. We want we want them to stay there, right? And right. spend more time and get to know us even better. Right. Okay. So uh, you also talk about improving customer service. How does our website help us improve customer service? Absolutely. And we can go into all these things a little bit more in depth. But customer service is one of those things that's really overlooked when it comes to your website. And um, I love a quote by Jeff Bezos who says that the best customer service is if the customer never needs to contact you, never needs to uh, get a hold of you because it just works. That's right. And so one of the things you can think about your website doing is having information that people can access without having to pick up that phone and call you and ask your receptionist the same question a hundred times a day. The more that you can put on your website, your client can go directly there, get the information they need. That saves your receptionist time or you time if you're the one on the phone saves your client time and that time adds up you know you'll they'll still call you but instead of maybe a hundred times a day maybe it's ten times a day and that time that you're no longer answering that question over and over again you can put towards something else you can essentially improve the productivity of your employees by investing more into your website yeah and I find that there's um, an irony there in that sometimes what companies do intentionally to improve the customer service tends to be some of the things that frustrate me the most mm. as the customer. For example, you mentioned Jeff, Jeff Bezos. So Amazon, I order something on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And you go through and you check everything, you click and you realize it's going to the wrong address. Mm. Because last time you ordered something, you sent it to your kid or to your parents or something sure. like that. Sure. So they actually put something in there to make your life easier by not having to keep re-putting in addresses. Mm -hmm. But what you, what you now have to do is proofread everything mm -hmm to the nth detail so you don't mess anything up. Make sure, sure, is this to the right credit card? Is this to the right, because I have a business one, I have a personal one, and then I've got, you know, my 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 parents are on there too, and I'm sharing it with a brother or whatever, right? right. So right. I gotta make sure everything's getting billed the right way and it's going to the right place. And I just had this happen a couple of days ago. I ordered, make an order. It's heading up to my daughter in, in Oregon, 
uh, instead of to me, right? <laughs> because I the one thing I didn't check was, oh, what's the default address right now? Because right. the last thing I sent was to her, right? Sure. So now I'm saying, I call my son-in-law up and say, just collect this stuff and I'll come get it when I'm up there next time. <laughs> so that's one of the frustrating things. I'm thinking, yeah. I know that they did that to make my life easier and give better service. But sure. by automating it, they actually frustrated me, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And, and so so that's always that balance that, that yeah. companies have to figure out is what is really working with the customers and what's ought. And I'm working, I'm sure they most of their customers are much more tech savvy than I am. Mm-hmm. I'm sure their average age is younger than I am. Mm-hmm. But they have a lot of customers, especially now after the pandemic, sure. that are going to be the less tech savvy dinosaurs like myself. Yeah. And and I'd almost rather have to hand put the address in to make sure it's right than not proofread it correctly and find out it's going a thousand miles away. Right. And I can't recall it. It is what it is, right? <laughs> so so, so it's an interesting, you mentioned that the, the customer service side of that and trying to make it better. And that's one of those things I think it's a, even though it's been around a while, it hasn't been around that long. Right. The, the internet, like I said, the internet hasn't really been around that long. And mm-hmm. I'm not that old and you're not that old, but mm-hmm. I think you remember before there was an internet. Correct. Oh right. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. When I, I, I've been a computer geek all my life. Uh, that's no surprise to anyone that knows me. And it was, so it was very natural to get into the internet when it was born basically 1995. That's right. Before the internet was connecting us all, all the time, you had to use your dial up modem to connect with that other computer. That was the, do, 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 right. All the noise. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And everybody in the neighborhood knew you were connecting up. <laughs> so, and then it was super yeah. slow. Yes. If you were going to, to send a photo to somebody, You'd click it, then you go off and make dinner and do laundry, yeah. you know, have a career, finish a degree, come back, <laughs> and then maybe his picture's finally loaded. So we're going to take a short break. and we get back, CG, I want, to, I want to ask you some more questions about this. We're just getting started. Uh, my guest in the studio today is CJ Gilbert. He is with, um, he's, a, he's a website pro, speaker, author, and coach. And as he said, the internet is a jungle, and he is the trailblazer and the guide that can help us through it. I'm Steve Matley. I'm Building Solid Foundations Radio. We'll be right back after this. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. Fire Up Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including, inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development, social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Hi, this is Steve Matley. As a construction professional, I know the importance of selecting the right contractor for the job. Power Solar employs only professional installers. Power Solar will provide a knowledgeable consultant to help analyze your current electric bill, identify site placement, and correct solar technology for your home. Contact KCAA producer at gmail.com for a free financial savings proposal with no obligation or call 951 551 1350 and ask for Kim. Again, that's KCAA producer at gmail.com or 951 551 1350 and ask for Kim. Welcome back to Building Solid Foundations Radio. This is Steve Matley, your host. Today, we are in the studio with C.J. Gilbert. He is helping us navigate the jungle that is the Internet. And and C.J., uh, we kind of little started talking on this, but I want to really get into where do we start on this journey of getting our way through the Internet and getting a website set up and figuring out where are we supposed to go? Absolutely. Great question. I, I love a quote by Lewis Carroll. If you don't know where you're going, you'll probably end up somewhere else. That's right. And that could not be more true when it comes to the internet. So the very first thing that I always talk about when someone says, where do we start? How do we get started? I want to build a new website or I want to fix my old website. What's the first thing we should do? It begins with the two most important questions. And here they are. Number one, what are your primary goals for your website? 
When I would ask business owners that, I would get a lot of blank looks because they never it never occurred to them that they could have goals for their website. And if you're listening to this right now and you think, I have no idea what my goals are for my website, that's okay. My intention is at the end of the program, come back to this question. And because of the things that we're gonna talk about the rest of the program, that'll give you some ideas for what your goals are. It could be sales. It could be improving your customer service. It could be providing resources and forms. It could be education. It could be entertainment. You know, you wanna ask yourself, what do you as a business owner wanna get out of your website? And even more, what do you want your customers to be able to get out of your website. So that's the first most important piece. And so that sounds like that goes to the basics of business planning. Yes. As in, because a lot of businesses don't have a business plan. They don't have a strategy. They right. don't have a mission, a vision. They don't have values. They don't have anything. No action plans. They're just, well, I'm really good at my trade and I might as well do it for myself as opposed to someone else. And yeah. they jump in and what they realize is they left the one position for someone else and took on about 30 positions for themselves. Exactly. And 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 they don't really have a plan. Exactly. So that would help you out greatly if they had some concept of what they were doing. <laughs> it would help you guide the website. And do you have customers that get frustrated with you because you try to put a website together and say, that's nothing like what I wanted, but they never gave you any material to work with? We want to avoid that if possible, but you're right. If you don't have that plan, it's very easy to get into that situation. So so we always try to have this conversation pretty much right away right. before we even talk about what it's going to cost or what's involved with it. We got to figure out what we're doing. So, so you become a business advisor as well as a cyber I advisor. I really do. I really do. Yeah. Okay. And so your second question was? The second question is we were talking about, you know, what do we want that website to do for you and, and what do we want it to do for your customer? The second question is, who is your customer? Who is your target market? And if you can, the more specific you can be, the better results you'll get. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter which specifics that you hone in on as long as you have some specifics. So for example, do you typically serve more men than women? Do you typically serve more families, more single people? Do the kind of people that you work with, are they more married, single, divorced, transitioning between one of those two? Does the uh, education level matter? Does their financial level matter. Uh, like I mentioned, each business is going to have their own, you know, secret sauce for which of those combinations is going to matter to them. But the, the point is that you figure out which of those pieces are important so you can talk specifically to that customer. Now, the person that's when they, when you ask them, and I, I've heard this before, they say, well, who's your target customer? And they say, well, everybody. Right. The problem with that is <laughs> when you... You're saying the 15-year-old gamer and the retiree both? Really? Right. This is who we're going after? How the, do the you fashion target model? a message, right, yeah, to yeah. both of those? Yeah, the fashion model and the, uh, the hard rock miner, and both of them? Really? It's okay if you have a couple target markets. That's right. okay as long as you're clear about this is my primary target, this is my secondary target, and the more specific you can be, even if you can give that person a name, this helps you in all of your marketing, not not just your website, but your email marketing, your social media campaigns, brochures and flyers and everything else that you create. So, so a profile or an avatar mm -hmm. of, of who this customer or this small group of customers is. Correct. Absolutely. And a lot of people, they, they're like, oh, I, but I want to serve everyone. I don't want to cut anyone out. And I say, you know, let's look at it like this. Imagine that you have a uh, a bullseye, you have a dartboard on the wall, and I hand you three darts, and I blindfold you, and I spin you around in a circle, and I tell you to throw it. How likely is it that you're going to hit the dead center of that bullseye? Probably not too likely. Whereas if I spin you around, but then I point you at the wall that the bullseye is on, you may hit it. You may hit the wall, you may hit whatever, but chances are you're going to come closer to hitting your desired target. Now, the point of this is if you know who your target market is, you can direct your messaging right to that specific person. You're still going to reach the people in that peripheral edge. You're still going to reach the people that resonate with you and that still want to work with you, but it gives you a place to shoot for. It doesn't actually limit who you're going to work with. It, it clarifies who you work with and more people will be attracted to you once they feel, oh, that's me. I'm that person you're speaking to. Yeah, I remember um, before we got spoiled by GPS. So you know, right now, GPS, <laughs> the one piece of information you have to give it is where do I want to go? Right. And that's what you're talking about. Where do I want to go? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, who am I going after? But before that, it the, the, the system or the map 
it was analog Thomas or, 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 or yeah. the Thomas Brothers or the, or the MapQuest, right? <laughs> right. MapQuest could tell you, you know, you could tell where you're going, but it didn't know where you were starting from. You had to mm. also tell it where you were. Mm -hmm. And so you needed to know not only where you're going, you need to know where you're starting from. Right. And then once you did that, there is a series of potential paths that could get you there and you're trying to figure out the optimal path. Absolutely. And so I think if people haven't done the basics in their business of figuring out where do I want to end up? Maybe, I don't know, not 50 years from now. But whatever I want to end up a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. Mm -hmm. Where is that? And and who are the people I'm, I'm supposed to be there with? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. figure out, where am I today? Right. Then they can start thinking through the path. And the website is a part of the path to get you from where you are to where you want to go. Absolutely. And, and a great thing that you can realize is that your website can grow and change and be modified just like your business is growing and changing and being modified. And all you have to do is get started with whatever you know today and just be open to the fact that it's going to change over the next three weeks, months, years, and you'll be able to change the website to modify that. This is much different slash better than, you know, 10, 20 years ago, you'd have to get your brochure printed and you had talk about proofreading. You had to make sure every word on that brochure was right. Because once you print it out, 5,000 or 10,000 of committed. them. committed, that's right. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. yeah, but today with your website being your online brochure, but I want you to think of it as more than that. When you have something that changes, either because it's a, a typo, that could be one thing, but maybe your service has changed. Maybe your target market is changing. Maybe your location is changing. Your website can grow and adapt and improve just like your business. Well, I just think of even the simple things where they one day they change your area code on mm -hmm. you. And now if you've got 50,000 print copies sitting in a warehouse right. that's got that wrong area code on it, do you throw them out? Or right. do, you, do you go through each time you hand one out and mark it out and write it in by hand? <laughs> that's that's a problem. And the right. website's really easy. Yeah. You go in and, and make that change or call your webmaster to make that change that's if you're right. like me. And I just call my webmaster and say, can you do this for me, please? That's because right. I don't want to deal with it. Uh, now, in, I remember when I was a kid, uh, when you wanted to find something, we didn't go into the computer. We, we put on this big fat book. Right, yes. it doubled as a booster chair sometimes. Yes. Okay, the yellow pages, and we and the thing is, as long as they got the right category, so uh -huh. you know, the same company could have ads in four different places in there. Right. Right, and so as long as they had the right ad in the right place under the right classification, your customers are probably going to find you. Right. Or you put in the newspaper, you put an ad in there sure. in the right section. Right. Sure. So if I if I'm selling if I'm selling gym equipment, I'm in the sports section and yeah. those kind of things. Right. Yeah. That's a different world now. It absolutely is. We have is. Google instead of Yellow Pages, but Google isn't like the Yellow Pages. I can't just flip and scan through two pages of the R's mm -hmm. to find what I'm looking for, right? That's right. That's exactly right. You know, uh, the Yellow Pages were the go-to source. For 150 years, that's the way you did business. You opened up your business, you got in the Yellow Pages. And have you noticed those yellow pages getting thinner and thinner and thinner sure, and thinner? They don't really exist anymore. And they don't really even deliver them anymore. Have you gotten oh, the postcard you... that says, hey, we still make them. If you want one, we'll get, bring one to you. Otherwise, well, use our website. you probably noticed that you can't pull the yellow pages out and stick your two-year-old on it to bring them up closer to the table, right? Because that's, <laughs> that's what we right. used to use those for. That's exactly right. Yeah. And and why is that? It's because we Google it. We all that's have it. these we have these smartphones, we're on our, in front of our laptop, we're at our desk, we're at our computer. So we just flip open Google or one of the other search engines and we type what we're looking for. And we get one page and we think that's everything. <laughs> but what we didn't notice at the bottom, it says page one of 3,465,000, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And even that page that you would get those results on, the search engine results page is what we call it, the SERP, that cha has changed over time too. It used to just be a straight list of websites and then the advertising appeared above the list of the and websites. It, and, and below uh, it and to the side and and they've they've taken away some of that because now they've added in the map section now the map section appears right at the top that's right b above the websites and so what you need to recognize is the yellow pages what used to be the yellow pages is now online business directories and there's not just one there's hundreds of them yeah, you that, know, we all know Google, Apple, Facebook, Yahoo, Bing. They all have their own version of these online directories. And, and what used to be that big, fat, heavy book now has enough information to fill every library in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you, it's have a lot sort, you have to sort through it. So you are one of mm -hmm. those entries mm -hmm. in that billions of 
entries in that list. That's right. So that's where you come up with how, what the keywords and those type of things that you need to rise to the top. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, one of the questions I get is what are keywords? Keywords is whatever you type into Google. If you type it into Google, that's the keywords. Maybe you're looking for, you know, a bagel and a cup of coffee, or maybe you're looking for a particular service or need. Whatever you type in, that's your keywords. And so people say, well, how do I make sure that I get the right keywords on my website? And my advice is never try to trick Google. You don't want to do this thing that they called keyword stuffing. Mm -hmm. And that sounds delicious, but it's not a side dish. It's when people take their keywords and they just inject it into every place they can. And what you get is you get this website language that's not natural. It's not, it does not read like a natural person speaking. And Google is now smart enough to tell that you're trying to trick them by filling up your website with well, these and they keywords. change their algorithms too. That's so why. I yeah. say change it for this month and three months from now, that's obsolete. Absolutely. It, it, but it used to work that way. When Google first came out, it was all about they would count the number of times you use that phrase. And if you use that phrase more than your competitor, you win. Yeah. Well, that became a slippery slope as people just started yeah. stuffing their keywords more. So now what you really want to do is use that natural language when you're describing your services. All right, we're, we're gonna pick up when we come back from this break and talk about how to use that to create more sales. This is Building Solid Foundations Radio. My guest is CJ Gilbert, and we're talking about all things website and internet for your business, and we'll be right back right after this. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. Fire Up Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including, inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development, social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. is able to help me greatly with my career because they actually have experience working in the field. The greatest thing about New School is the fact that there are so many different disciplines which allows you to really understand and get a good insight into different types of design. And I think it's that whole changing mindset of what design can really do for a city and this is kind of the place to be. This environment cultivates creative thinking. Hi, this is Steve Matley. As a construction professional, I know the importance of selecting the right contractor for the job. Power Solar employs only professional installers. Power Solar will provide a knowledgeable consultant to help analyze your current electric bill, identify site placement, and correct solar technology for your home. Contact KCAA producer at gmail.com for a free financial savings proposal with no obligation or call 951 951- 551-1350 and ask for Kim. Again, that's KCAA producer at gmail.com or 951-551-1350 and ask for Kim. Welcome back to Building Solid Foundations Radio. I'm your host, Steve Matley. Today, we are in the studio with C.J. Gilbert. He is helping us navigate the jungle that is the internet and talking to us about our business website. When we left, we were talking about keywords, and, and that's all good, but I'm curious how to use those keywords to actually make more sales because if I'm a business person, the reason I put the website out there was trying to bring customers yeah. in. So how do I convert that into actual sales? Absolutely. We mentioned earlier about your, your goals. You could have the goal to to make more sales with your website. I would believe that that is most people's number one goal uh, for, for most people. And if you wanna make more sales with your website, I want you to remember this one phrase, people choose the familiar. People choose the familiar. We talked earlier about what a great opportunity you have to essentially be 
part of that sales process, but they're in their own home or office environment. They feel comfortable. They don't have that wall of sales resistance up. And so they're, they're open to learning more about you. Now is the time where you want to let them get to know you. You want to have the videos, you want to have photos, great high quality photos and videos, really let them get to know you, let them, whatever's appropriate for business, let them meet your staff, let them see your office, let them see pictures of the products or, or if you have services, pictures that relate to the services, all of those things feed in to them building a familiar feeling for you. And when people are ready to make their buying decision, they rely on that feeling. We used to think that people made a buying decision based entirely off of logic and facts and reason. And now we know that's not true at all. People make their decisions completely, completely based on how they feel. Human beings are absolute emotional creatures and we throw enough facts and statistics in to let us delude ourselves into thinking <laughs> that we were logical when we made the decision. Exactly. Because we don't want to admit that we made that decision straight strictly off of a feeling. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, so we want to think we're better than that. On your website, you want to do both. You want to give them the facts, you want to give them the figures and the details, but you also want to remember that we're talking to human people and they need to get to know you on that on that deeper level. And that goes down to the, the number one feeling is trust. Mm -hmm. People do business with who they know, like, and trust. And in a cyber business, if you're doing things remotely, that's a lot harder to do than when I meet you and talk to you on a regular basis if that's I'm right. across the table from you. Um, so we have to do something, and that's what you said. People choose the familiar. Mm -hmm. the familiar becomes what we trust. That's right. It becomes what we know. It becomes the comfortable. And That's people right. like to stay where it's comfortable. We don't like risk. We don't like uncertainty. We don't like anxiety. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that a mistake that people make very commonly is thinking that their website is all about them. And what I always want you to remember is that your website is really all about your customer. Now we keep hearing though that it's about you and if this is what the brand is, you gotta brand yourself. Sure. Make sure you brand yourself. And your, and your brand really is kind of your reputation that's out there, mm -hmm. right, that you kind of manufacture. And so that would make it think like it's about yourself. But I, you know, I, I work at a college too, and we do a lot of students, and I tell them, you know, don't think when you go to apply for a job that the interview's about you. Mm. Sure, it's your resume. Mm -hmm. And they keep asking questions about you and your experience and your education and what you think about this and what you think about that and how would you handle the situation. It's not about you. Mm -hmm. It's about the company and their current need. Mm -hmm. See, they have a job to fill and they don't want to have to do it again. Mm -hmm. And they want to make sure that the person they bring in is a good fit, not a high maintenance person, right. isn't going to leave anytime soon, isn't going to be whiny or complainy, isn't going to show up on time. Mm -hmm. So it's about what you're bringing to them. Mm -hmm. It's not really about you at all. And I think the same thing with the website. Same thing. It's not about you. It's about the customer you're trying to reach. Right. But we're being told, well, it's all about your branding. So it must be about you. Right. Right. Again, all of these things, in my opinion, have to do with your customer and what your customer is perceiving as what's important to them. So I have to argue with uh, the the business owner that wants to make it all about them. And then I also have to argue with the business owner that doesn't want anything about them on their website. And to both of these people, I have to say, it's all about your customer and what they want. They want to make sure that they're doing business with someone that has a good reputation, that is knowledgeable, that has the right certifications or education or whatever those criteria are that make you feel like you're doing business with someone that's respected and can take care of your needs. So you absolutely want to have a modern website, a professional website, site, make it look like you're, you're up to date. You want that clear brand identity, not because of who you are as a company, but for the clarity of mind that it gives to your customer, that they know who they're working with and that they're making a good decision. Yes. And like I said, the website that my company has, I have two companies, but the company that I do the land investing with, um, that is, it's got information about myself and my two partners. Mm -hmm. That's not about who we are. It's about the people before they give us any money would like to know who the heck we are. Exactly. And they want to know, now that I know this, can I find them? Can exactly. I go search them? Can I can I do Google searches and see what 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 dirt I can pull up on, right? <laughs> exactly. They want to find out, you know, they just did they just get indicted last week or what was right. <laughs> so they want to know these things. Yeah. Um, there's project information. That's not to brag. That's mm -hmm. so they can see this is what we do and yes. this is how we things turn out. And and we do videos and education because we know our customers don't always understand what we're doing. So they Absolutely. need to be educated. And, and the whole idea is this is a starting point to educate yourself. Um, now, if I want to get going on this, what's, what, what's my next step? How do I start yeah. with this? You know, that's a, that's a great question. And it's a, it's a question your customer is going to have. You want to be very clear on your website. What's the next step for them to take? It could be 
call you, make a phone call, but it could also be some sort of a opt-in or a demo or a free trial. So an action item. So they go yeah. to your website and there's some type of action there. Absolutely. You want you want that call to action to be, again, whatever's appropriate to you. Now, now I know some websites, they'll do this and it's, you know, put your information in here and we'll get you a free PDF article on something mm -hmm. that you may be interested in, mm -hmm. right? So is that a good tactic to use? I think so, yes. I think that's a win-win proposition because it gives your customer something right away they can sink their teeth into. It gives you an opportunity to continue to speak to them, communicate with them in the form of an email list. I recommend to everybody to have an email list. It's the other thing you can own and control on the internet. And I feel you're getting it through your website, so it's related. And so one thing you can do with that, if you if you want to kind of stay, like you say, we like people like to be voyeuristic a little bit about this and yeah. stay in the shadows. You can sign up for that, get the information, and you can always unsubscribe from the emails Absolutely. later. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. yes. Yeah, I we never spam people, the customers I work with. We don't want that. We only want people on our list who want to hear from us, who are excited to hear from us. I hear the only place they really like spam is in Hawaii. Is that true? <laughs> if you're reading there. So, it's delicious. It is. It is too. <laughs> so I, when we're putting all this together, I keep I keep thinking about one the, the, basic, the basic premise of systems theory, mm. which is your system is always perfectly designed to give you whatever it is producing. Now, what it's producing may be not what you want. Mm -hmm. It may be producing mm -hmm. lower sales, bad reputation, who knows what, right? right. Poor service. Right. But whatever whatever your system is, whatever it's producing, that's what actually what it's designed to do. Yeah. So you have to fix the design. Mm -hmm. So if if I have a website and what it's yielding is very few views, it's it's turning people off instead of turning people on of working with me, it's driving them to my competitors. Right. That means I that's been designed all wrong. Yeah, or it just hasn't been thought about intentionally. You know, my right. goal for your audience is to is to consider these ideas and then begin to intentionally use them to make their website better. Which it, is redesigning it to work. That's absolutely. right. Absolutely. Yeah. And in one way, a website is never done. A website's never done until your business is done. You know, you don't want either one of those to be done until you're ready for them to be done. <laughs> so, so it's not a set it and forget it proposition. I, I hire somebody, I pay them some money, they put a website up, I'm like, okay, that was good, I'm done, I'm right. out, right? right? Now I'm just gonna sit back and wait for people to show up. Right, I think instead of that idea, you could have the idea that there's always something you can work on to improve. And maybe this week or month, you wanna work on improving your sales. Maybe the next week or month, you wanna think about your customer service. But it's one of those things you can always work on one of these pieces and then circle back to it the next time around. Okay, so so in, in improving customer service, um, that means after the sale, mm -hmm. usually, right? Yeah, right. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm using the website to get sales, but I actually have that same website which I'm using for people to access after they made the transaction. Right. And so what do I include on my website to help serve my customers? Great question. I would love you to consider the overall process that your customer goes to through. Uh, certainly it begins with a sales process. What are those steps? What's the first step? Is there a demo? What are the next steps in that transaction that you need to, maybe you need some information from them. Maybe you need them to fill out a form or, or get some sort of contract or agreements to Together, each one of those steps could be a page on your website. Maybe it's not necessarily something they can access by themselves. Maybe they get to the first step and then after your conversation, you send them the next step or two. But that continues through the lifetime of your customer. What happens next? Maybe there's resources you want them to be able to get to or forms or so many other things that you can think about. How am I serving my customer? What are the steps I usually take my customer through and what am I sending to them? We can put all those things on your website so you can either send them the link or just show them what that next step is. Now, if we do this, and if we do this right, by doing customer service and follow up and resources, mm -hmm. there's also value add additional sales that we can actually sell more to our customers to make their life better by solving more of their problem. Because maybe Absolutely. we solved an initial problem with the first sale, but now they have other needs around that mm -hmm. that need to be filled in. Mm -hmm. And so by I can actually use that for follow-up sales as part of serving my customer well. Absolutely, don't they say it's much cheaper to continue to use the current customers you have versus going out to acquire a new customer? That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes when you buy things, um, there's ancillaries or add-ons you can get for it that make it much more functional. Mm -hmm. And maybe the, you know mm -hmm. people test it first, see if we like it, and then we go, I wonder if it can do this. 
and then they come back. We, we go through some FAQs. They find out, oh, look, it can. Yeah. There's a little add-on I can purchase. And so I can I can buy that, and now I have more functionality. Absolutely. That ties back into the education that you were talking about before, right? We're educating our customers about what's possible. Often when someone's coming to your website, they don't know enough about what you do to even know what questions they should be asking. So putting that FAQ on your website is phenomenal. It's, it's probably the number one thing I recommend that everybody include on their website. That, that, by the way, stands for frequently asked questions. What are those questions that people ask you all the time? Put the answers right there and on the site. Google takes common ones of those. And when you Google something, it shows up yes. questions, right? And there's all these lists of frequently asked questions yes. related to the topic from all kinds of different sources. Exactly. Yeah. So include the frequently asked questions. And then, like I mentioned, they may not know what else to add or ask include what I call the should be asked questions. If they knew enough, what else would they be asking? By including all that information on an FAQ page, you can increase all of these things, your service, your sales, and your search because you're able to put keywords onto that page that you may not be including anywhere else on your site. Great. We're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to talk about some tools and resources that you have available. This is Steve Matley on Building Solid Foundations Radio with my guest, CJ Gilbert. We'll be right back after this. I love how New School is able to help me greatly with my career because they actually have experience working in the field. The greatest thing about New School is the fact that there are so many different disciplines which allows you to really understand and get a good insight into different types of design. And I think it's that whole changing mindset of what design can really do for a city and this is kind of the place to be. This environment cultivates creative thinking. Real Men of Real Estate with Steve Matley, construction manager and real estate developer, business owner and educator. Did you know that right now there's 22,000 units deficit? Tunde Ogunwale, real estate development professional, Naval Academy grad and veteran with a deep understanding of the public sector process. All of us want to live in thriving communities. Brian Fox, real estate expert and investor dedicated to helping hundreds of clients make money in real estate every year. There's so much housing going in. The builders are begging for more land. Future company can come in, lease up space to employ those people who are living in the homes. We have to put the housing in place. They either, either have to have houses, they want to make sure that there's a strong employment logistics center. Things like information hubs. We are a shipping economy now. There's economies all over the country where their prices are doubling and tripling. Hi, this is Steve Matley. As a construction professional, I know the importance of selecting the right contractor for the job. Power Solar employs only professional installers. Power Solar will provide a knowledgeable consultant to help analyze your current electric bill, identify site placement, and correct solar technology for your home. Contact KCAA producer at gmail.com for a free financial savings proposal with no obligation or call 951 551 1350 and ask for Kim. Again, that's KCAA producer at gmail.com or 951 551 1350 and ask for Kim. Welcome back to Building Solid Foundations Radio. I'm your host, Steve Matley. Today, we're in the studio with CJ Gilbert. He's helping us navigate the jungle that is the internet, and we are talking through your business website and what it needs to have and how it can help you with sales and customer service. And before we get into some free uh, tools and resources you may have for us, CJ, I've got a question for you. And this is one that I keep, I stay up at night wondering. If Batman has a bat cave and Superman has a fortress of solitude, mm -hmm. does Spider-Man have a website? Hmm. Great question. I think that's where he would retreat to. Yeah. Yeah. This this sounds like it could be its own show. I think it could be. If we go into that question. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to cross two over. That's a Marvel thing. And oh, yeah. The Disney and uh -oh. all that stuff. So, uh -oh. you know, we yeah. don't do that. Licensing and IPs <laughs> exactly. and things like that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. When I was growing up, that was the only website we knew was, was <laughs> Spider-Man, right? So... Okay, so let's talk about some free tools and resources that you may have available to us to help us out because you do offer that for people. Yes, absolutely. I've got three resources I want to leave you with today. 
Uh, the first thing that I want to offer you is a free directory listing scan tool. So we were talking about the importance of your business being listed in all these online directories. You, as a business owner, probably don't know what all those directories are. Therefore, you don't know how you're listed in there. Therefore, you don't know if there's the right information there or not. As you mentioned, businesses change, they move, they move addresses, they change phone numbers. And what happens is you'll get this smattering of information across the internet. And sometimes people say to me, well, I don't care as long as the information is right with Google. And I say, okay, however, Google is looking at all of those other places because they want to make sure they're serving the right information. And nobody's really QCing these lists. They are not. No, no one is because every one of these sites decided they're going to be the next greatest yellow pages and they just started sucking every business owner they could find into their list. They have no idea whether it's right or Partial not. Partial information, old information. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So one of the tools we offer completely free, you can access at any time, is at my main web design website, which is gilbertstudios.com. My last name, Gilbert Studios with an S at the end, dot com. And if you, if you poke around there a little bit, if you go through our services, it's right on the homepage. If you look for it, you'll find the free scan tool. All you have to do is put in your name, your business name, address, and phone number, and it's going to do a map. It's going to look at the top 80 of these websites and just cross-reference, do they have that same information that you just entered visible on their site? If it's not, it's going to show you what's wrong. And you can actually click on each one of those listings, jump to the live listing, and register with that site and fix it yourself. I'll let you know right now, that's going to be very time consuming. We offer an amazing service that fixes all of the listings all at once. Okay. But start with the free scan just so you can see what you're up against. So this goes back to what we talked about earlier. You have to know where you are starting from exactly. before you can figure out how to get to where you're going. Exactly. That's exactly right. right. So check that out. That's the first uh, tool. And, and then that's something, if that's in error, could be damaging your brand and your reputation without you even knowing. Without you even knowing. Oh, you exactly. could be confused with other businesses with similar names yes. that may not have good track records. Yes, absolutely. I've seen all kinds of crazy things when people run these scans. Competitors and uh, you know nefarious things. Right. Keep in mind that all of these websites are what they call crowdsourced. And yeah. if you've ever seen it on your phone, Google is asking you to fix that listing. You know, That's is right. this place still open? Are they closed? Is it a different number? So people could do anything mm, nefarious things with that information uh, so yeah like, like wikipedia <laughs> or yelp or something anybody can put anything right. they want okay exactly and right. then you have some other uh, resources what's the next one yeah i offer a free video workshop so we've been talking about through all these topics there was a lot of information packed into this short show and i want you to feel like you can go back over and over it again so here's the website where you can go to get this it's my website safari.com there's also a link off the gilbert studio site but it's my website safari.com there are seven videos each of them are less than 10 minutes but they're going to walk you through systematically each one of these places that you can improve your site and you can rewind and you can watch it as often as you like okay and then you have um a video podcast is yeah right? absolutely i have a i have a facebook group and a youtube channel which is called ask a web geek so after you've gone through that uh, website safari, you're still gonna have questions. You're still gonna wanna know about how to use different tools online. That's what I want you to come to askawebgeek.com and ask any questions you have. We've got 42 episodes up there right now with all kinds of questions answered and we want your next question. So I can cover that in an upcoming show. Okay, so this is you are, this is like the talk shows where they pull questions out of email or call-ins. Exactly. And, and field the question right there. And exactly the right. But great, great. Okay, and, and these are all perfectly free. Mm -hmm. I don't have to sign up. I don't have to offer my firstborn to you or commit a one-year contract or any of that kind of stuff, That's right? correct. That's correct. Completely free. Share it with your friends, neighbors, and partners in business. Okay. And, and I think that's great because I think all businesses have to have that some element where they're giving a little bit of something back to the general public, even if there may or not be anything coming back to them. Absolutely. You know, when I first got into business for myself, I didn't know anything about business. I'd had other jobs. I'd had sales jobs. I'd had customer service type jobs. And I feel like everything I did previously led me to understanding better what a website can do for a business. But what I find is a lot of business owners are just like me. They get into a business because they know how to bake cupcakes. They know how to sure. fix cars and they start doing their thing. And all of a sudden, days, weeks, months down the road, they realize it's so much more than just baking the cupcakes and fixing the cars. Yeah, when I did a business consulting work, I would 
create an organization chart of a business. Mm -hmm. And it had, you know, the accounting and the finance and the payroll and the marketing and all the stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Everything in their sales mm -hmm. operations. And then I'd put their name in every single box. <laughs> yes. This is why you're so tired. Okay? Yes. Because you used to do one box and now you do 50 boxes. Exactly. And they're all full-time jobs. Exactly. So uh, just want to repeat, if you are interested in doing the directory scan tool, that's gilbertstudios.com, gilbertstudios.com. If you want to access the video workshop, that's my website, safari.com my website safari.com and if you want to ask a question and find some answers that other people have asked go to askawebgeek.com and there's all kinds of great information there and if you don't see what you like put a question in and maybe yes. cj will get that and answer it for you absolutely uh, so cj um any final thoughts before we leave today I really appreciate you having me on your show today, Steve. This has been amazing. I want to encourage your audience to consider using your website and these other tools as your number one business tool because, again, your website is the only thing you can fully own and control on the Internet. Fantastic. Thank you, CJ, for being with us today. This is Building Solid Foundations Radio on KCAA, 1050 AM, 102.3 FM, and 106.5 FM, serving Southern California. We're also on your favorite podcast platform. We're on Roku. We're on YouTube. Coming soon to Amazon Fire TV and Android and anywhere else you find great entertainment. I'm your host, Steve Matley. We look forward to having you back with us next week on Building Solid Foundations Radio. Miss your favorite show? Download the